Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my garden. Today, I am showing you how I harvest, dry, and process dill for my herbal apothecary. If you're not aware, my small business is called Alma Apothecary, where I specialize in loose leaf herbal teas, um, hand blended spice blends and seasonings, as well as homemade bar soap. And um, I'm growing this dill specifically for my lemon dill seasoning blend. Um, it is a wonderful blend that is great for making dip with, like a, like a Greek yogurt or sour cream dip. It's also fabulous for seafood, um, salad dressings, and is great on vegetables. So it's one of my personal favorites, and I love growing dill for this reason and for other reasons as well. I love to use dill for canning and it is one of my favorite culinary herbs flavor-wise. So with my business, my goal is to grow as many herbs as I can. And for herbs that I can't grow yet or, or don't have the ability to grow, I do source them from organic and high quality suppliers. Now you can see that this patch of dill is a small patch that I've grown in a container and that's because we moved to a new property this year and we're just getting our gardening space built out and established. And so my goal now that we're at this new location is by next summer, so in about seven to eight months, I would like to be growing 50% of the herbs that I use in my teas and my seasoning blends. So that is something that I am working on all the time to get that infrastructure built out. Now it's early in the morning at the time that I'm harvesting, about nine o'clock in the morning. And this is a great time to harvest any herbs in general. Uh, the sun's been up for just a couple hours, so all the morning dew has burnt off. And it's a good time of day where the oils and the flavors are at their most potent. I'd like to mention that we grow using permaculture principles and we use or as many organic inputs as possible. And what we never use is pesticides. In fact, this dill, like many herbs, is a cut and come again herb. And this is the third time that I am harvesting off of this one container of dill. And even earlier this summer, this was completely, I would say, I don't want to say decimated, but it was eaten all the way down to the stalk by monarch butterfly caterpillars. And it has grown back uh, fuller and, and nicer since then. And I have harvested from it twice more. <laughs> so I don't mind sharing the dill with the monarch butterflies. They are super important to our ecosystem. And having now harvested from this three or four times, this will be my last harvest from this dill plant. I will be ripping it out to turn this bed over to make room for other plants. Now I'd like to share a little bit about why else I love dill so much, other than it being um, one of my favorite culinary herbs and in my lemon dill seasoning blend. Um, it also has some great ben benefits for your health. It's high in flavonoids. If you're not familiar, flavonoids are those plant compounds that are found in really deeply colored uh, vegetables and plants. And flavonoids are very high in antioxidants. Um, dill is also very high in vitamins A, vitamin C, iron, and folate. So always so many benefits from these herbs. And I think that in herbalism, culinary herbalism is also is kind of often overlooked. And um, so I love using herbs in the, in the spirit of letting your food be your medicine. Once I've harvested all of my dill, this is an opportunity for me to put the herbs through a second quality check. And this is where I go through and I just look, I cut off anything that doesn't look healthy, but this is very healthy looking dill. And then I just cut off the sprigs uh, so that I have some smaller manageable pieces for drying and I'll discard uh, the large stem and that will just go into the compost or the worm food. So that's what I'm working on now and I lay everything out on a clean towel or paper towel 
and just go through and do this. This is my second opportunity to check that every sprig that I'm using in my recipes is healthy. And I wish that you guys could smell this. The funny thing about a lot of herbs, but dill being one of my favorite, is when you walk up to it in the garden, you can smell it from like several feet away, which I love. So one thing to note is that you could just throw the dill as is onto a drying rack. You don't have to take this step, but I do it because of the quality control that I mentioned. And I also have a small space that I'm working with. So I want to save room in my dryer. I don't want to use space in my drying rack to dry parts of the plants that I know are not going to make it into the final product. It is an extra step, but that is the benefit of buying from a company that is a small, um, you know, handmade business. We put a lot of care and extra love into what we do. I've separated all the best looking dill sprigs from the stems and sorted out anything that didn't look so good for drying. And next I'd like to show you guys my drying rack setup. This is my herb drying rack. It's a mesh system. It even expands much further than this. But this is in the, a closet, my apothecary closet, where I keep my other herbs, where I cure my soaps. Um, you can see that there is already some dill. This was put in here just two days ago. It's already uh, finished, so we'll be putting that in a jar today. I also have this small fan that just blows directly on the drying rack and it just keeps airflow going in this area. And I can oscillate it and move it position so it works out great for me. Another great thing about this setup is it's just really ideal for what I need. This closet never gets used for any other reason other than my apothecary. It's closed off. We don't have any pets, <laughs> uh, any inside pets or anything like that. So there's never a worry about anything getting contaminated. It's just a really good secure environment for my herbs. I am also able to keep the lights off so they don't get exposure to UV or sun and it just works great. So now I've taken the just harvested dill and spread it out across the second shelf and this will be dry in 24 to 48 hours. Another thing that I do is I take a piece of painter's tape and I label this row that it is dill and the date. Dill is very distinguishable from other herbs, but when you're drying things like mints um, and lemon balms together, they're harder to distinguish after they're dry. You can always smell it and taste it to try to figure it out, but it's just easier if you do the best practice of labeling. So next I'm gonna take the herbs that I have already dried and show you my process for getting them into the jar and usable format that will go into my lemon dill seasoning blend or that you at home could use just directly in your seasonings. And for this, I'd like to take, lay out paper towels or a cloth, and I like to take a piece of parchment paper that I've already creased in half. And then from there, I can separate out my sprigs and I just take a pair of shears that I've sterilized with alcohol and I just snip into small pieces like you would find in a spice jar. And then I discard the additional stems. So this provides like another quality check, uh, an opportunity to just take a look at the herbs and make sure that everything that's going into the final product is a quality piece of dough. Now, I will mention that this technique is for smaller batches. Uh, when I am drying larger batches, I have a screen that I use to sort and sift the herbs. It works greater for larger leaf herbs like your mints, lemon balms, basils. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that in another video, but this is great for the home DIYer or when you're doing, I mean, dill is just a, such a small, delicate herb, and I find that it doesn't it doesn't crumple the way that I wanted to, which would be a quicker way to do it. So I just cut. So 
So once all the herbs are sent up into smaller pieces, and you can see that it takes quite a lot of fresh herbs to equal a little bit of dried herbs, which is why I'm working to scale up my growing space. I would just like to go through it one more time, make sure there's no bigger stems that I'd like to take out. There we go. Even though the stems are fine and they have a ton of flavor themselves, just I want these pieces to be relatively small because I'm putting them in a blend with other uh, herbs and botanicals, right? If I was just cooking with this by itself, I would just throw it in no matter how big this sprigs of dill because I think they're absolutely beautiful. But anyway, this looks really wonderful. It looks like we've got a great texture here. And so I'm going to go ahead and get it into the jar, which I've already started. And let me grab a funnel for this. If you have an apothecary, a home apothecary, an apothecary business, canning funnels um, are totally worth it. And creasing the par parchment paper in advance is, helps it go into the jar so easily. And I use these, um, sometimes I use regular mason jar lids, but these uh, reusable plastic lids are very affordable. And I store this in a jar that'll be airtight. And I've already labeled this, but I've labeled that the still is homegrown and it also gets a lot number and the date. So I think that's about it for my process. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learn more about my business, um, who I am as a person, how I choose to do things here at Alma Apothecary. And if you are a home gardener or an herbalist yourself, I hope it gave you some ideas. I always love to see how other folks do their processes. And um, I would love for you to like this video and subscribe. It's such a free way that helps me out big time, helps me continue moving forward with this business and making educational videos for you guys. I will see you on the next video and thank you so, so much for being here.